everybody. Welcome to Radio Labyrinth. This is season eight, episode 42. And we are here tonight with Steph and Jeff and myself. Uh, Tim couldn't be with us tonight. Uh, he apologizes, uh, but he'll be back with us next week. Uh, but we're going to persevere tonight and give you guys the show of your life. <laughs> Maybe I'm overselling it a little bit. But. <laughs> Massively. Massively overselling. We just finished recording our Patreon episode. Um, if you would like to be a member of our Patreon and be able to watch that episode, it's available for any tier member. So $1 all the way up to the $25 uh, sign up and you can uh, have access to that. Um, you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash Tim Andrews and sign up. And if you sign up for the $25 level, our producer level, uh, you get a doodle from Tim. Uh, you get your name mentioned on the show. You get some stickers, some stuff sent to you. As our T-shirt store comes together, you also get a shirt sent to you. Um, and again, like I said, weekly shout outs on the show. So let's go ahead and thank our producers for this week. Our producers are Tim Slayton, Brian and Chelsea Smith, Jeff Peterson, Jim Fortner, Terry Fuller, Chris Chandler, Roby Neely, Kevin Jackson, Mike D, and Matt Carter. Thank you guys very much for supporting us. Check out that episode. We talk about the Halloween party that we had at Atlanta Pizza and Euro. And um, also talk about the Five Nights at Freddy's screening that, that uh, we went to as well. Yeah, if you were at that Halloween party, you heard the episode that we we did there. But that's the only time you'll ever hear it. Yeah. It was a one and done. Our recording <laughs> our recording kind of uh, fell apart. I mean, we did record it. We did have the episode. Ira was there and, and we did a game. But um, that is, uh, if you were there, you, you consider yourself lucky. That you, <laughs> if you were there, you that was it. The lost episode. But yeah, it was a lot of fun. And again, thank um, Mike and Kim, Atlanta Pizza and Euro for having us out there and and uh, all the staff as well for, for coming in on a Sunday and helping us get that together. Everybody had a really good time. And we are going to move on. I put a, we got a, we got a review. Oh, yeah, we did. did. We got one? We did. We got a review and it was on, it was on uh, Apple. Okay. Oh. And it's from Peas Nuts. <laughs> oh, old, old Peas Nuts. Peas Nuts. <laughs> old Peas Nuts. And he gave us, or she gave us five stars and then said, God, I hope I don't vomit on my walk again today. Peace out, homos. Bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> that was uh, our review. Um, I'm not sure what that's from. Is that from? I don't uh, know. Yeah. I hope I don't vomit on my walk again today. I don't think it really was Bobcat. Do you? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think he goes by Peas Nuts. <laughs> he might. We never know. That's a good name, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was Shane, Shane Gillis. <laughs> he, that I could see him doing that. You want to just get right into some news, talk about some topics yeah. and whatnot. Yeah. It was this huge, Jeff. Did you put in that Atlanta finally got some Michelin stars? Yeah, that was kind of a big deal. I saw yeah, that. it is. Yeah. So, who? What restaurants? Let me pull the list up here. I saw Gun Show got didn't get a star, but got one of the recommended things. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that they were still open. Yeah, they also Michelin... gave some uh, green stars, which are it's for like the um, environmentally friendly restaurants that hit a certain qualification. I think there's yeah. only like so many of those in the country, and Atlanta got like two of those as well. Five, oh. five restaurants got a star, a Michelin star. Atlas, Bacchanalia, Hayo, Koi, Koya, Lazy Betty, and Mujo got one star, Michelin stars. I've only heard of Atlas and Bacchanalia. Bacchanalia yeah, the other two like are the staple. Two of them are Japanese restaurants, like sushi restaurants. Mm, okay. Then there's a bunch of recommended restaurants. The General Muir. Yeah, the General Muir. The nah. Chastain, Buka Lupu. The Alden Gun Show yeah. was one of them. Home if you've grown. never eaten at um, General Muir, that's a that's a must. Yeah, it is yeah. a hell of a. That's a very, from what I understand, a very authentic New York deli. Yeah, have, I went there. I loved it. I like the aesthetic of it too. 
they had some beets in this dish that they served, and I I, I normally hate beets, but they were really good. Oh, and this is back when I still ate meat, and I went there for their burger because they have a double patty. Right. That is pretty damn good. It really is. So if you're a burger fan, definitely go to General. But you know the main reason to go there is the corned beef and cabbage, yeah. and the, the uh, you know any corned beef sandwiches and uh, matzo ball soup and any of that stuff that you yeah. like. Well, that's pretty cool that they got. I wonder if um, Hugh Atchison was irritated that his place didn't get one. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to see made... some of the Miller Union. Jeff, were you the one who is asking what the hell is going on on Gen V? No, I think that was Tim. So Tim said, by the way, we need a balance here. Tons of mutilated dicks, zero <laughs> boobs. That's what, that was my complaint, that the, it's all male nudity, no, <laughs> no equal opportunity in nudity. You you are right. I have not seen a lot of nakedness from women on that show. What? I can't even remember. What the hell happened last they episode? They went in, inside Kate's head. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a trip. I, I would immediately get in the elevator. Down, <laughs> down, 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 down. You down. sicko. <laughs> You're so gross. I don't know if that would have the same effect, like, from the inside out, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> you ride the elevator out if it's going to give you <laughs> any kind of good sensations. But yeah, I, mean, I, I really liked it because I thought the episode before that was a little bit boring. I wasn't super into it, but then I felt like they really came back with this last episode. Yeah. Have you guys watched that Hard Feelings movie yet with Jennifer Lawrence? No, oh, I, I saw it, it just came on, on Netflix. I, I, I mean to watch it, but I haven't watched it yet. It was so, to me, it was so surprisingly funny. I had no idea that she was funny like that. Yeah. I mean, she's a great actress, but uh, she's funny in this. And, it, you know, it's the same guys that did Good Boys, so it has right. that sense of humor to it. It's so dark. And uh, But anyway, is, I think you guys... the plot are, that she's trying to take uh, kids' virginity so he doesn't... Yeah, it's kind of like an 80s it. movie kind of thing where they hire the nanny or whatever to... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the kid is like, you know, your typical kids these days who never leaves the room and has no social life and blah, 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 blah. And he's about to go to college and his parents are super helicoptery and they want him to go to college and have confidence and all that. So they hire her to bang him, to give him some confidence. And then they're going to give her um, it's like a 2013 Buick. (laughs) <laughs> nice. 40,000 miles on it. <laughs> so she needs a car really bad. So she's banging him for this Buick. That's I mean, great. right off. Yeah. But she's, you know, she's like your typical mess. She's thir- in her early 30s, kind of a drunk and a slut, sort of. And, uh, you know, life's kind of falling apart or whatever. And as you know, these things go. Everything works out. We'll just say that. Yeah, Everything nice. works out. But it, it is super funny. And the kid that plays the version. He, he, I don't know where he came from, but he is hilarious. He's so subtle. <laughs> and at first you're like, what? And, but then, you know, he's really good though. Did you think, I was going to say, did Go you ahead. think that the nude scene was gratuitous? Could they, I felt like a lot it of it and... was CGI. No, she, oh, no, she did. Like she was real, a full nude scene. Yeah. Full it was nude really scene, that, that fight. It goes on forever. <laughs> it does. And, but it does. My that's surprising to me broke. that it was. Huh? My pause <laughs> button broke. <laughs> you broke it. Nobody will watch it yet. Well, I'm sure your pause button will break when you do watch it. But uh, yeah, she's na- I mean, she's just naked and beaten the crap. Not just beating the crap out of people, getting the crap kicked out of her naked. So that's funny too. Hmm. It's not a. S- <laughs> it's definitely not a sexy thing where you're going to be like, oh, that's hot. Yeah. Well, I heard to, I heard today that the Gen Z they did a they did a survey from kids from 13 to 28, I think, and their question was, what do they think about sex in movies? And they got 56 percent of the survey said that they don't care to see anything sexual or romantic in movies. It's a generation of sex is not in the forefront of their mind, like most people their age when we were their age yeah i think maybe do you could it possibly be that they have like porn of themselves out though yeah yeah they That's, constantly yeah, they have a phone up with porn yeah. Yeah. yeah it's not yeah it's not important it's not a mystery anymore you know it's not no. something to not know about Strange. i know 
I mean, my nephew, I mean, when he was 11 and my mom on her phone found I, really over the top porno, like not just regular, like run of the mill kind of <laughs> stuff. Yeah, just it wasn't good. You know, there was like an apple in somebody's butt or something. I don't know. It was just some weird. It, it was it was it was excessive. So um, Apple, but Apple butts nine. Well, I think they made a bong out of it or something. <laughs> like it was a bong in her butt. <laughs> And I, Can you I'm find out really what the name of that? Can you find out what the name of that is? That's Apple, Apple Butts Nine. I think, I think it's called Yeah, Training Your Butthole <laughs> with an apple. Butt so, bong. It's an. It's, and I, who? How do you think they come up with these ideas of things to put in their butt? I think they run out of normal ideas. <laughs> yeah, and and they just reach for the stars when it comes to. Uh, what can we do to get people to watch this? Well, even though, you know, there's not really, I think one of the few things, one of the few industries where you can make an independent film and True. make sure that it's going to be watched by hundreds of thousands of people is just make porn. What is something that neither of you have ever seen in somebody's butt? A car. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> well, then, um, Abraham Lincoln. I don't know. Um, That's what I'm thinking. I was I was just thinking that, you know, if we were gonna do like an original butt movie, what are some things we could put in somebody's butt that have not been put there before? A little tiny man in your butt. A little tiny man in your butt. Yeah. <laughs> Pokemon balls popping under your butt. And I'm sure that's happened. Just like I'm, I'm assuming that somebody's put like a whole blender or something in their butt, maybe. <laughs> kitchen appliances? Yeah. I'm draw the line at kitchen appliances. <laughs> I, was, I was playing ping pong and ding dang. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I like playing ping pong and ding dang. It's a real high stakes game in some opium den. Turned out the guys I was playing aren't the kind of guys you like to lose. I shoved a ping pong paddle up my ass. It's never been the same. I don't know what I would do if somebody shoved the paddle handle at my ass. Listen the handle. Shitting pancakes ever since. <laughs> Shitting pancakes for two years. <laughs> he put it in. Sideways. <laughs> it was sideways. Yeah, yes. man. Oh, yeah. So well, let's get back to the news here. Um, fans speculate new South Park is mocking Disney. What's new about that? <laughs> they I mean, mocked everybody. They don't hold back against anyone. I mean, especially you know, to those in power, they're the ones they're going to go after most of the time. But it is weird that Disney is trying to sue them and legally stop them. Nobody has been successful at that with, with Trey and Matt, you know, over the yeah. years, they've always come out on top. Well, I I definitely want to see. So when I haven't seen this new South Park, have you seen it? Uh, it hasn't it, come out yet. It comes out tomorrow, I think. No, no, twenty ninth. Yeah. Oh, Friday. okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but yeah, it's. I mean, it, I assume it's it's along the same lines of like the the COVID one, and you know those where it's kind of like a mini movie, and those are always always great. But it's like an hour long or fifty minutes long or something yeah. like that. But they're I guess the the problem is they're focusing um on the disney and snow white and the whole pc thing again mm. and how they're changing up you know all of these things trying to to appease the woke crowd no i really i don't want to say that after watching old dads I'm so over this the making fun of the woke it's pretty much hack at this point and I, yeah. I, I don't want to hear another joke about it or it's, yeah. I mean, you sound like an idiot going on and on about it now. I mean, it was like a few years ago. You're like, oh, yeah, I'm the woke. And now it's like, Slam. yeah, I, well, I think I think Burr wanted it's like he was trying to get his two cents in. And it's but it's been way too, too long, you know, to try to put those two cents in. Now, that whole scene at, when he was the one young kid was like clearing out the office you know anyone that was born before yeah. 1988 he was gonna fire that whole conversation was like it was mind-numbing to listen to that yeah it was so it was so cheesy cornballish yeah I, like, I was not expecting that i thought it would be better than that I, to me the funniest part in the whole movie had none of the main characters it was whenever 
he was showing that footage of the guy in his apartment <laughs> singing gold all of my chain <laughs> <laughs> that when it, the part when he because he had the mouthful of cereal and he said it yeah. with the mouthful yeah. of cereal that made me laugh but that was it and the whole rest of the movie i'm like oh god this is awful it's so bad yeah, yeah. that's why i went straight to netflix i guess well, yeah i think so did they, did, who was it produced by was it netflix produced because i know he's got his deal or whatever with the he had the cartoon and yeah, that's everything true. else. But also, to me, it seemed like he may have gotten in over his head on directing the movie and the network or whoever the producers were in charge. They had a lot of notes and mm. they, they kind of pushed those notes on him because some of that stuff didn't seem like it was his style, really. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah, it made him seem like he was a thousand years old. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like... Yeah, I think they were just trying, he was trying to, like, illustrate how Gen X is now the old people, you know, and we were like, how could this be? <laughs> but he just, he didn't really hammer that point home so much. It was just more about him being, nah, nah. Yeah. And, and then it got all serious, and then he's all crying, and just, yeah. you know, and then the wife from the league, who I like sometimes, but it was like, an, they were that whole screaming match. I'm like, God, Jesus, this is so, <laughs> so much. This is going on forever. Right. But yeah, it's, it's almost like they saw him do the, the Mandalorian and they were like, wow, he can, he could be dramatic if he wanted yeah. to be. And it's like, you know, just because somebody's a really good actor doesn't mean that they're going to produce a good a, a movie with that same amount of emotion to it or, um, but you know. It's, I think it's like you said, though. I think you had a, lo a lot of notes is probably yeah. what happened. So the first time he's directed a movie. Yeah, first too. time mo directed a movie. And so I'm sure he was like, I need to, all the help. You know, I'm, I'm over my head. And all of a sudden, that's where changes start coming in that he has no control over. I didn't realize that he directed it to yeah. you guys. Yeah. just said that. Yeah, oh, that wow. was his his whole thing. That's why I was like expecting more from yeah. it with, with it being him. But that can't all be a de winners. decent first effort. Yeah, it was, it was good. I'll watch his hey. next movie. I've never finished a screenplay. So <laughs> um so speaking of Gen X though, Gen X royalty, the the uh Nepo babies of Gen X royalty, Kurt Cobain and Tony Hawk, their kids joined into like this awesome gleaming the Cobain mm -hmm. skateboarder rocker union, which I thought was very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when they 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 had gotten together and it Cobain's came kid out. is still a baby in my head though. Yeah, yeah. She, what's crazy? I was I was reading something on him uh, the other day. I had no idea the value of publishing rights that she owns all of her dad's stuff. Courtney doesn't own any part of right. Kurt or Nirvana or anything. It's all um, beans. So uh, she got her first installment when she was eighteen of two hundred million dollars. And she blew she blew through eleven million dollars in two years. <laughs> oh, sure, of course. But the yeah. funny part is, Easy. she gets the rest of it when she hits thirty, and so that was supposed to be a portion that, that she got. I, I, probably another th over over two hundred, so because it was a portion that she got, and that was two hundred million. So she gets the rest of the estate or whatever. That's off to her though. I mean, because she could have ended up being just like a total piece of crap. Yeah. Just a rich little idiot. And she seems like an actually decent person. Yeah. Why? I don't know anything about Tony Hawk's kid. What do you do? He's a pro skateboarder. Is he? Yeah. Yep. Just like dad. Right. Just followed in his old dad's footsteps, which I think is kind of cool. I'm sure the two of them probably still cut it up. Right. I know Tony Hawk, he, he, I'm sure he's slowed down a little bit because, you know, we're getting into that osteoporosis type situation. <laughs> and yeah. He's, he's going to snap a radio or an ulnus. I think he's already replaced. He, he did have a, some major injury that yeah. he couldn't skateboard for like a year. Wow. Yeah, he, but he came replaced, back and he's, he's like a hip or a knee or something. Yeah, yeah something. I, I think he was on Conan talking about that. I wonder the who's the oldest podcast. skateboarder. Tim Robinson. <laughs> really i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i saw that uh so britney's book dropped this week yeah any old amazing old. revelations it's pretty much what you thought i believe that your her dad was controlling and her sister's the witch and 
Justin made her flush their baby down the toilet. He, Make no toilet baby. She got um, $18 million up front. So that would be against sales. And so everybody was like, okay, well, she's going to end up owing. And now the sales, <laughs> the sales on it, it's already at like, uh, like three quarters of a million. So yeah. Didn't they say that it's the highest selling um, oh, debut? Man, everybody, everybody wants to read it. And I think a lot of it was probably promotion. All this crazy shit was probably a lot of promotion for it. If she's that, I mean, I hope she's that smart. I hope that all right. of this shit for the last three or four months has been just, you know, pumping up. We're getting ready for it. Go. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, if maybe it was. The, the naked spinnings will will stop. I don't know. Uh, but she did post a picture of herself today, just naked. And, from, <laughs> and you just see her butt. It's just a whole back of her naked with her nice. straight up, just her butt like here. Instagram, which I'm surprised. I didn't think Instagram would let her do it, but they got they got her to stop including her her dogs in the videos, though. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, because that was turning into something. Like people were calling, <laughs> they were calling all kinds of agencies on her and stuff. I want to listen to the audio book because uh, Michelle Williams is doing the audio book, or she did the audio book part of it, or whatever. And they say like she imitates. Justin Timberlake voice and she I think something about he said I think he said for shizzle for shizzle and you know he meant it at the time he wasn't being ironic he was right. really thinking he was being cool and she says it when she's doing the audio recording when she's <laughs> imitating him she does him uh, Mariah Carey I guess she d tries to impersonate my Mariah Carey and all that so hmm. it might be good yeah I'll uh, check it out yeah I probably will too Hey, I want to say thank you to Atlanta Pizza in Gyro, or Gyro, however you want to pronounce it. They're our longest sponsor. And I want to say thank you to Mike Hall and everyone at the restaurant. Uh, fall is here, and we have some new local craft beers for you to enjoy. We don't, but they do. Um, and not one pumpkin spice, which I'm kind of disappointed. Mike made an effort to point out in the commercial that, or in the email with the new copy that uh, they didn't have pumpkin spice. And, and you know, what kind of beer season is it without pumpkin spice but i get it i get it not everybody likes pumpkin not everybody likes pumpkin spice i like it it looks like my thing now featuring two locally made german style merzen beers i said it right they have the umlau over the a like motley crew uh they have that on tap uh terrapin oktoberfest which i'm sure is delicious and dry county oktoberfest which I'm sure is also delicious. And I'm back into beer drinking mode, so when I'm out there, and we're out there uh, for a Halloween party, I'll be drinking some of that. Uh, both of these local brews are delicious amber lagers and feature a clean, rich, toasty, and bready malt flavor with a nice, dry finish. Atlanta Pizza in Euro serves up the best freshly made Greek and Italian specialties around in an authentic retro, dry, retro dye pizza place with a come-as-you-are family-friendly atmosphere. Dine-in and takeout available, limited delivery also available through Slice, DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats. And if you're a business or a corporate client who is looking to book a food truck for your next private or catered luncheon, please contact Mike Hall at Atlanta Pizza in Euro by calling 770-483-6228. They are open for dine-in and takeout Monday through Friday, 11 to 9, Saturday, noon to 9, closed on Sundays. Also, do you have a commercial or residential construction printing need? Well, what are you waiting for if you have said needs? Contact LDI Repro Printing of Athens. They've been in Athens, Georgia since 2005, so almost uh, 20 years now. With fast turnaround and affordable prices, call 706-316-9366 or you can email them at athens at ldiline.com. Snooze. 
Uh, Last week, really old dads, we talked about mm-hmm. upload. I haven't started watching that yet, but I enjoyed that show and Pete Holmes special, which I haven't watched yet, but I'm gonna. I watched about ten minutes of it, but I was had to leave. But it was it was funny. I mean, it's Pete Holmes. He's always yeah, funny. he's funny. This week, the Enfield Poltergeist. You guys know anything about this? Yeah. This yeah. is a four part Apple ser- mini series exploring the real paranormal events that inspired the movie The Conjuring. Actually, it was The Conjuring Two. It oh, was The Conjuring Two. Okay. Yeah, it was the it's the one set in England, and it was all um, it was all really documented, and they used a lot of the real footage in the in the movie when they made Conjuring 2. And I thought it looked pretty interesting. I'm going to use it. Yeah. I've only seen the, I mean, I've seen the British version. Yeah. There was a I, mini series yeah. that you, you, yeah, you suggested that a couple of years ago when it came it was, out. And it was really good. So I'm, I'm, I'll definitely want to watch this. Yeah, me too. And uh, Shorty finally comes to America this week. Yeah. Season three, two. Season two. 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 Yeah. It's greenlit for season three though. Yeah. 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 I just That's, heard that yesterday. Yeah, I can't. I can't wait for it. I love Shorzy. Almost. It started about a month ago. It started about a month ago in Canada. Yeah. Have you seen any of it? So that no, couldn't get it because they they released it one week at a time. That's why we're getting it all at once when we get it. Cool. That's a great show. Shorzy's hilarious, and the hockey. If you're a big hockey fan, watch it. Uh, South Park, joining the Pandaverse. Paramount Plus. We we talked about this a little, but it's a views for me. Definitely want to watch that. Yeah, me too. Always. That's for you this news. Okay, we do some okay. picks. That picks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I'll go first. Mine is uh it's a it's a show on HBO Max and it's with Hillary, the chick that was on Love It or List It with that other guy. Do you know Love It or List It? Yeah. If they don't love it, they gotta list the house or whatever. Uh she's on a show called Tough Love. And I'm um, it's just one of those house jazzing up shows, but she comes into your old jacked up house and just tells you all about yourself and what you need to do, but in a British way. So you don't get mad, Right. <laughs> but it's, it's a, it's a good show, but it's called tough love and it's on HBO max. Cool. I'm gonna check that out. I like those house shows. Yeah. I think you like it. She's funny too. I, I, I enjoy her. Mine's just uh, Arnold on, on uh, fly on the wall this week with uh, David Spade Dana Carvey talking Arnold about Schwarzenegger. It. Yeah, he's making the rounds because he's got a book out. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Well, I definitely want to hear that. Yeah, yeah. They had a pretty good time with him. Yeah, he had he had a good time on Conan too, because um, Conan had just recently done the script reading of the the Hans, Hans and Franz, Franz movie. Yeah, yeah. And Arnold said he listened to all that and, and loved it. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, Conan was kind of surprised too. He was like, "Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god." Yeah. Okay, I have to listen to this. I think show. I think it, it placated his ego a little bit, so yeah. he was he was all into it, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Tim said Jamie Kennedy on Harlan Highway, which I'm I haven't listened to that one, but I'm sure it's it's good. Jamie yeah. Kennedy is just an interesting dude. Yeah, and Har- he, Harlan's funny with everybody. Yeah, and Jamie Kennedy really he's so funny, and he's had such a shit show handed to him through Hollywood yeah. the years and he, he yeah he kind of deserves better but um but he's he's cool with it that's the one thing he's, he's yeah. he takes it and owns it um let's see mine is a show on Netflix it's an it's a eight episode limited series called bodies it's I saw by the preview pa- for this and I, I thought it looked good yeah it's by Paul Tomlin uh Tomlin he's the uh writer for shameless and torchwood and it's based on a 2015 graphic novel uh, from DC, it's uh, four murders that happen in four different times: um, 1890, 1941, 2023, and 2053. But the the weird part about it is, it's the same body four different mm. times in in history, and the mm. same, the exact same murder. But they're trying to solve it, and. Uh, it's it's interesting. I watched the first episode, and uh, it looks like it's going to be good. So yeah, I'm gonna check that out. Any bar- any Barkville stuff going on, Steph? Um, yeah, I'm this Saturday. If you're in Canton, come out to the Reformation Brewery over off of uh, two two five Reformation Parkway in Canton, Georgia. 
And they'll be there for like five hours, like, you know, a lot of dogs in Halloween costumes uh, from noon to five. So please come on by the Reformation Brewery. It's a really cool brewery if you haven't been there and they have great beer. So anyway, but that's the Saturday. And uh, yeah, and the, my JDRF walk is the following Saturday. And uh, yeah, so if you can oh, donate yeah, post, or... post a link how we can donate for I, your, your I will you know a lot, a lot of the uh, well, some of the listeners have already do- it was very cool they donated and the already. link is in is 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 in the uh, show notes if cool. anybody oh, wants yeah. to click on it it's there okay cool 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 how yeah, far you so, got to walk oh it's like 3.5 it's not oh, okay. it's down it's uh it starts in atlantic station we did it last year right it's really nice because they close so you walk, off you walk over to the ikea get the meatballs you can smell those meatballs, man. They they got them <laughs> stewing at you know we're we're there at eight in the morning doing this damn walk. It starts at like nine, but you got to be there at eight for all the festivities and all the and the stuff. And uh, it it was cold last year, which I enjoyed. You know, I love a brisk whatever. Yeah. But you start right out there at Atlantic Station, and they take your ass. I mean, it's down Fourteenth Street, and then you're snaking all through the city, which is kind of cool. And oh, uh, you cool. know, just take whoops you back around. But oh, uh, I thought yeah. you were going to be doing a track. Like no, no, somewhere. you go no, into cool. Atlanta. I mean, and there's cops on every corner to you know make sure you don't get hit by cars or and nice. all that jazz. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, it's a it's a fun walk. We had a good time last year. So any yeah, we had to, we got shirts and everything. I have the company cool. name on it and and all that stuff. So. But uh, yeah, so it, Markville, though, if you can donate, foster, adopt, we really appreciate it. Volunteer, uh, Barkville Dog Rescue dot org. Woof. Yeah, keep it canine. Keep it canine. All right. If you're watching on YouTube, remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when we have a new show out. But everybody knows they come out Saturday morning. So uh, hit it if you want to Um, go ahead and rate us and review us on any of the podcatchers. Spotify is good. Tim will be back with us next week. Uh, Yeah, he he said to apologize for his missing the show. So until next week, everybody remember to keep keep it it canon. And happy Halloween.